Hello and welcome. Uh, we are discussing the interpretation of the class expressions in the description logic. So, in the last lecture, we have defined our interpretation function, right? But when we talk about the interpretation of something, so this interpretation consists of two things. So, basically, when we talk about interpretation of uh, our expression, or a class expression, it consists of two things. One is the domain of discourse or domain of the element and the interpretation function. And put together, they give us the interpretation. So, interpretation in description logic consists of two things. One is the domain of elements or the domain of the individuals and the interpretation function, right? And both of these two we have discussed in the last lecture. Now to start with, let us take an example and try to see uh, how can we come up with some interpretations for uh, this example, right? So the example that we'll be taking uh, or working with will be cons consisting of different kind of assertions in the knowledge base. The first assertion is the KGP robotics member, right? So, this is the class that we have talked about earlier, KGP robotics member. And this is a subclass of KGPM. So, this is what we have uh, defined earlier, right? And we make uh, robotics. Uh, uh, Rahul to be the member of AGP Robotics uh, group, right? So, AGP Robotics member, we make Rahul to be member of this KGP Robotics, right? And we also define something or assert something like this. They studied at studied at Rahul studied at IIT KGP. Right. So this is our uh, DL knowledge base, or in a sense, our knowledge base. DL KB. Right. Now let us talk about one interpretation, and this in this interpretation, let us take uh, this domain of individuals to be x, y, and say ninja. Can be anything. So you can take anything. So these are also kind of symbols, but they are uh, replacing the concrete terms in the domain. This this is a bit confusing, but uh, we are trying to have a mapping from these symbols to this concrete term. So, you can think this to be concrete entities, right? So, these are not really symbols. And delta i, uh, sorry, gamma i uh, of Rahul, so if we apply this gamma i over the individual Rahul, We map that to say ninja, right? And gamma i. So these are the mapping we are performing over the individual. It kgp is say y, right? And uh, so it should have the interpretation of the class uh, kgp robotics member, right? Kgp robotics member and for our given interpretation let us take this set and this will be a set you know right so let us have this uh, uh, x to be only the member for this so this is a single term set in this interpretation right you can have multiple interpretations so gamma c uh, kgpn 
So, this is also a set, right? So, let us consider say x and y to be the elements in this set, right? And finally, you got to have say gamma r, which is the interpretation uh, function applied over studied x. And let us assume that, so it will be containing pairs, right, uh, pair of individuals, pairs of individuals. So the first pair being x, y, and the second pair being, say, y, means, uh, right. So this is our first interpretation. So this is interpretation 1. One. Right. So, you see that uh, this function, this interpretation is basically consisting of this. Uh, so, this is your I1. I should write I1. Mm. Right. And this it is having say delta 1 and gamma 1 to be the elements. Right. And this delta is delta 1 and this gamma is gamma 1. We are not using this delta 1 gamma 1 here right but the point that <coughs> so this is one interpretation so let us uh, find out another interpretation so i'm not evaluating how will this inter interpretation will be uh, uh, or what is the relationship between this interpretation with this knowledge this is just an interpretation right now let us think about another interpretation where you have the domain of element to be delta and delta is having say a b c d and say e right and gamma i rahul is say d right gamma i of iit kgp is say d right and gamma c of kgp robotics member uh, to be say a d right and gamma c of kgpn to be equal to say a C, D, right, and gamma R uh, studied at is say A, B, and say D, D, right. So, this is our interpretation I. I T. Right. Now let us try to evaluate uh, our knowledge base with respect to these two interpretations. So there might be other interpretations. So at this point we are interested in these two interpretations. Right. So let us try to evaluate this interpretation against this knowledge base. So uh, Raul has been mapped to Ninja, ITKGB has been mapped to Y. Right. And uh, KGPN has been uh, uh, mapped to X, Y and KGP robotics member has been mapped to X, right. Now, if we try to evaluate this, right, first evaluate this, right. So, what is KGP robotics member? KGP robotics member is X, right. What is KGPN? KGPN is X, X, uh, Y and we are, what we are getting? We are getting x to be a subset of x y, which is really true, right? So this this passes the test. So the, for this interpretation, this passes the test, right? Uh, now we have made uh, uh, Rahul to be the member of KGP Robotics member, right? Now here we have we do not have any mapping of x, so. 
Okay, so we, we have made, yeah, so X is a member of KGP uh, uh, robotics uh, member group, right? So that is fine, right? But we do not have the case that Rahul has been mapped to Y. So the instance Rahul has not been mapped to X, right? So in that case, we can say that this does not go with the interpretation that we have here, right? Because Rahul has been mapped to Ninja and we do not have Ninja to be the uh, member of this set, right? Which is the uh, interpretation of KGP robotics member. Now let us look at studied at Rahul KGP. We have mapped Rahul to Ninja, right? And IIT KGP to Y. So in a sense, we should have this Ninja and IIT KGP to be inside this set, but we do not have that here, right? Do not have that here. So in that sense, this is also not uh, going with this interpretation one, right? So that's why. So this interpretation I one. So though this is a kind of uh, right interpretation, correct interpretation, but it does not make sense. It does not make sense. Sense with respect to the knowledge base, right? Now let us come to this interpretation too, right? Now here uh, Rahul has been mapped to D, right? Now KGP robotics member is having two elements A and D and in that sense this D is a uh, member of this KGP robotics member class. So in that, in, in that sense this is going fine. So this is Now let us, let us try to evaluate this uh, first expression which is KGP robotics member means KGPN, right? So the KGP robotics member is a set AD and KGPN is ACD, ACD and you know this is a subset of ACD so that's why this is also valid, right? Now the third one. So we have mapped D, uh, Rahul to D and uh, IIT KGP to B, right? So we should have the entry D, B, this pair to be inside the studied at, the interpretation of studied at. And you can see that we have one entry here, D, B in the studied at. So that's why this is also going with this interpretation. So this interpretation satisfies all the uh, mm, elements in the knowledge base uh, in this in this input knowledge base. So that's why we can say that that this interpretation I two makes sense. Sense with respect to uh, the KB, right? So if we have something like this. So the interpretation which for uh, uh, for which which uh, really has got sense to this particular knowledge base or basically it satisfies the knowledge base. So that kind of interpretation is called the model of the knowledge base. So what do we mean by the model of a knowledge base? The model of a knowledge base in the first place is an interface. And the second place is that this interpretation should satisfy the knowledge base. If that is so, then that particular interpretation is, uh, is defined to be the model of the input knowledge base. Right. We will talk about this later in a, in a more elaborated form where we will be talking about the reasoning and different reasoning tasks in the description logic knowledge base, right? Now, with this, uh, let us come back to the attributive language, the semantics of attributive language. So we are 
discussing the interpretation interpretation or the semantics of the mm, concept expressions in attributive languages right so in attributive language to recapitulate what we can have we can have these forms right so mm, a concept expression c can be one atomic concept there can be a top concept there can be a bottom concept we can have the negation of the atomic concept not the complex concepts we can have intersection of two concepts if concept expressions we can have universal restriction we can have limited uh, existential restriction right so these are the kind of things that are allowed in attributive language we we like to uh, compute the semantics or the interpretation of each of these concept expressions right so uh, given one interpretation uh, function i so the top concept it will be equal to the set which is basically the set of delta right so the top concept is basically the set of all the individuals and delta is what delta is basically the set of all the individuals so this are these two sets are equal right so the interpretation of this t will give you a set and that set should be made equal to this delta interpretation right so what would be the interpretation of the bottom concept the bottom concept is uh, having no individual right so uh, it is subset of all the sets and it does not contain any individual so if that is so it can be represented as a null set or empty set right so what would be the interpretation of a interpretation of a would be basically the elements that are there inside so that we need, we don't need to write that so that is a kind of uh, baseline case right now how do we really interpret this negation of uh, a right so this is basically a set difference between two sets uh, this set minus set a right so all the uh, members of delta except the members of a right so how do we interpret c1 intersection c2i or c1 intersection c2 so it will be basically c1 interpretation of c1 and set intersection interpretation of right so how do we interpret for all rc so again uh, let us try to visualize so who are who will be the kind of member of this class expression so they will be the e's which will have the outgoing relations to be r and all these will have values to be say v1 and v2 and all this v1 and v2 will be member of c or type instances of c right so we'll be having a so let me use some other notation maybe a and b a and here we use b1 and b2 right so it will be what what would be the output of this the output would be the set of such individual a and this individual will belong to the of course domain element right and what would be the constraint the constraint would be whatever b is connected to a they should be connected via this relation r and b should belong to the interpretation of this class right 
So for all B, so B can be B1, B can be B2, AB, so we are taking first say AB1, right, should belong to the interpretation of R. So in this case, what is the interpretation of R? The interpretation of R is basically the set of pairs A, B1 and A, B2. So, these are the interpretation of R, right? So, here if we take B to be equal to B1, A, B1 belongs to R, right? And it should imply that B belongs to C interpretation. Right. So now A B one belongs to R in uh, interpretation. Right. Now if that is so, let us check whether B one is belonging to C interpretation. So B one is belonging to C interpretation. Right. Now check for B two because B two is another uh, value that is uh, that this A is having for the relation R or role R. Right. So in that case, uh, the pair that we are concerned about is A B two. And B2 is belonging to C. So it has got all the values B1 and B2, and all these values they belong to C. In that scenario, A will be the member of this for all RC. Right? Now, how do we interpret the other remaining term, which is basically the limited uh, existential form? So basically, it will be. Again, uh, uh, it, it, so let us try to visualize it. So A, it should have at least one relation R, and this value is V1, I, and I'm re, I really do not care in which class this V1 would belong, belong to, right? So basically, it will be a set of all the individuals A, so all these A's, right, such that there exists at least one B, there exists at least one B, such that A B belongs to R interpretation, right. So in, the, in this case, A B 1, it belongs to the interpretation of R. If that is so, then we can say that this A would belong to this particular uh, class expression and A would be belonging to the interpretation of this class expression. So this is how we can interpret this, all these constructs that we know uh, that are there in this uh, attributive language. Now you can see that earlier we used to give some natural language statement for uh, representing this for all RC, there exists RT. Now we are providing a very mathematical form of this uh, construct and here there is no scope of ambiguity. We, we can understand if we understand the mathematical form of this set, right? And that is what we call as the interpretation or the formal semantics of the expressions that are there in the activity plan. Right. Now let us uh, take some examples and try to uh, evaluate uh, for a given interpretation what would be the kind of outcome of the membership of different concepts. So what we have with us, so the input to us is to, uh, are two things. So inputs are two things. One is an interpretation and what will it contain? It will contain delta and gamma, right? So this is first thing. The second thing is a concept expression. Expression, the output would be, output would be a evaluation so this is your i evaluation of c with respect to i so this is what we are going to do with an example right 
So, let us say we have got something like delta, uh, delta is basically WP1, so these are the web pages WP2, WP3, WP4, WP5 and say WP6, right. And uh, we have something called say uh, web page, the set of web pages, the interpretation of web page. So, the web page is another concept. Interpretation of web page is the delta, right. So, all the elements they are uh, belonging to the class web page. So, that is what we mean by this statement, right. Now, we define our the interpretation of the academic sites, right? Academic site. The interpretation of this would be so let us assume this to be say WP4, WP5, and say WP2, right? So, there is something other kind of sites which is called say sports sites. So, these are the this is the class of sports sites and the interpretation of this is equal to the set WP1, WP3, WP6, right? Uh, now, you have got uh, one uh, relation which is links to. So, one website links to another website, right. And what will it contain? It contains the WP1, WP6. So, let me not put this comma, WP6. Then the second relation that is there inside links to is WP1, WP3. The third relation inside this links to is WP3, WP2. The fourth one being WP2. To, uh, WP4 and maybe the last one is WP2 to WP5. So, this is the interpretation of links to, right. Now, we got to evaluate something, uh, a complex expression which is a uh, web page. So, let me draw this, uh, write this in different color. Well, so the concept expression that we are going to evaluate is a uh, web page intersection not sports site not sports site. Uh, then intersection for all links to academic and finally it has got at least one outgoing link. So, this is the concept expression that we are trying to evaluate. Right. Now, to go about it, so you will be first uh, trying to find out the uh, interpretation of web page, interpretation of sports site, interpretation of links to etc. Et right. 
So again, uh, before going to draw the uh, evaluation for this, it is always better to visualize this interpretation. That will give us enough cue to whether our evaluation is going correct or not, right? So for simpler ones, it is not really necessary to draw the um, interpretation visualization, but for complex uh, relations, it is better, always better to come up with a visualization of this interpretation that you see here, right? So for this, let us uh, uh, draw this interpretation uh, visualization. So you have got WP1. So we'll be taking this individual. So we'll be transforming these individuals as nodes in this graph, right? And uh, the relations to be the edges as we have done earlier. So WP1 has got one edge out of eight and it goes to WP6, right. Now, if there is only one relation in your knowledge base, then you don't need to label these relations. Otherwise, if it has got multiple relations, you have to label the edges also, right. We have got one, that's why I am not labeling the edges. We am implicitly assume that this means links to, right. Now, this WP3, uh, it links to uh, WP3. WP3 links to say WP2. And WPT link links to WP4. And WP2 links to WP5. Now, you see that uh, w, we, we have this other interpretation, like academic site has got uh, three elements in, in its set, WP4, WP6, and WP5, and WP2. So, for all these, we mark the nodes to be academic site. So, WP4 is one academic site. So, let me use A for academic, right. Uh, WP5 is academic. And WP2 is academic. And WP1 is uh, sports. WP3 uh, is sports. And WP6 is sports. So, whatever you got here, this is what we call as we call one interpretation. So this is an, a, a convenient way to evaluate this concept expression as we see uh, now. Now, how do you represent this web page? Uh, what is the interpretation of this web page? Uh, so we have already that one to be here. So the interpretation of web page is equal to WP1. So I'm not writing down everything. So WPC. Right. So, what is the interpretation of not of sports site? The interpretation would be uh, WP4, WP5, and WP and WP2. Right. So, what should be, would be the interpretation of for all? links to academic. Now, here this graph will come into play, right. Now, let us think about uh, this, right, WP1. So, it has got one, at least one link and it links to W6, which is sport. So, WP1 is ruled out. Right. WP3 is uh, having um, uh, um, having one link to WP2, which is academic, but it has got no other links, outgoing links. So we can think WP3 to be an element of 
the thing that links to only academic science, right? And also, if we take the, this WP2, WP2 links to WP4 and WP5, right? So, it has got two links and both these links, they are pointing to academic. So, WP2 will be a member of this interpretation set, right? Now, coming to there exists link to T. So, basically, it will contain all the nodes that are having outgoing link, right? So, will be having WP1, right? Will be having say uh, WP3, right? Uh, WP3. Will be having WP2 because they are having at least one outgoing link, right? Or links to, right? Now the result of this uh, uh, evaluation of this concept expression will be basically uh, this this interpretation of this would be intersection of WP1 to all the elements WP6 which is basically representing web page interpretation of web page then we have WP4 WP5 WP2 which is negation of sports site intersection of this set WP3 WP2 and finally the other set WP1, WP3 and WP2 and the result of this intersection would be uh, uh, I guess uh, WP2 right this, this individual right. So, uh, with this, let us move to the other form of uh, semantics, which is the first order logic based semantics. So, earlier we have discussed the model theoretic semantics of attributive language. Now, we will be talking about first order logic based semantics. Now, what we will be doing? We will be doing a very simple thing. We will be defining one transformation function phi. So, this is a transformation function. What it will do? It will transform one expression into the corresponding first order logic representation of A. So, this is what it will be going to do. Now, there are two things that we should remember that the atomic concept, the atomic concepts will be mapped to unary predicate. So, if we have something like A, it will become A. So, for example, if you say, say student class, so this is an atomic concept. So, this will be uh, mapped to, if we use phi, this will be mapped to student x, right. The second thing that we should consider that we need to map. So, these are kind of handling the classes. Now, how do we handle the roles or the relations? So, we will map the roles uh, into binary videos. So, these binary relations are relations that are having two arguments. So, for example, R x y, right. So, for example, if you have something like say uh, has brother, so phi has brother 
brother will be mapped to a uh, hash brother brother x square right and now see that here we are having one argument so we'll be putting an argument x to be here and here we are having two arguments we'll be having x and y here right now let us start with the most basic thing which is the case of atomic concept so uh, this transformation function is a kind of uh, recursive function right so the baseline uh, case for or base case of this recursion is the atomic concept so how do we translate one atomic concept so this a is the atomic concept expression and in it translate this it will become a x so this is the base case right now we have got a uh, uh, c1 intersection c2 so if we try to translate c1 intersection c2 so here these are these all these expressions involving classes right so we should put one argument right so it will become equivalent to or equal to phi of c1 x intersection phi of c2 x so let us take some example so for example say uh, uh, student intersection at athlete right so if we try to uh, convert it it will become equivalent to student it should be and logical and student x and athlete right now how do we interpret phi for all rc so this is also a class expression so that's why we'll be having one x as argument right now so how do we read this so for all so this this uh, we, we we should think of the arguments which are basically uh, uh, so again let us try to visualize then come back to the representation so you have got this x right and you have got different arcs and this is y1 and y2 and these all belong to C, right? So th this means if there is a relation between x and y1 and the relation is R, then y should belong to C. So what I am saying, if x are y1, so that means x is uh, related to y1 via relation R, then y1 is of type c so this is what we are representing and how do we represent that in first order logic so basically for all y so phi r x y imply phi c y so let us try to think over it a little bit so this phi r x y what needs to be so r again can be a complex expression so this r can be a union of two row lengths right so as we have seen earlier so first you have to convert them and as this is a relation and you know for these relations you have two arguments because relations are always binary so that's why you're having two arguments right so let us uh, have some have an example for this so so I think we can pick up the example that we have talked about in the last uh, slide, which is basically uh, for all uh, links to for all links to academy. So if we want to trans translate this, it will become for all 
y right links to now this links to is a simple rule so we are just having this uh, phi r to be links to the same as r right links to uh, x y so that will indicate that will imply that y belongs to academic right academic So finally, we have uh, we have to translate there exists R top right and X and it will become equal equal to for all there exists Y by R uh, X right. So again, uh, we are having an example earlier. So if you want to just translate phi. Uh, there exists the links to dot top so it will be equal to there exists y links to x so these are the ways uh, uh, we can translate uh, the uh, Description logic statements into their corresponding first-order logic statements. Right, we need to uh, use this transformation function, which translates these expressions recursively. Right. Now, this AL is a baseline language family, and as we add on other more features to it, it will be trans formed into other family right so for example if you add the capability of having a concept expression like c1 union c2 then this family will become a l e right now on top of that if we use the full existential restriction, full existential restriction, then this will become A L U E. Now, as, as you can see, when when you create an ontology in Protege. In the active ontologies tab, so there will be something called DL expressivity, and you can check whether whatever we can we are we are, we are mentioning here that is conforming to uh, the um, DL expressivity value in Protege. So we can create an ontology that will consist of all these expressions, and with this you can see whether uh, you have got similar kind of values for this DL expressivity. Specificity uh, tag in active ontology in protege, right? Now in the other part, with AL, if you add full negation, right? So if you had if you, uh, I guess uh, we should start from here. If we add full negation. That means you can negate any class expression. So it, it may not be only atomic class expression as it was the case for AL only, but you can uh, negate any class expression. Then it will become ALC, which is attributive language with complement. Language with complement right and on top of that if you add the case of uh, transitivity role transitivity then it will be transformed into a l c 
plus trans and we call it as simple language and A stands for simple. Right. And on top of ALC, if you add unqualified cardinality, cardinality, then it becomes ALC. Right. So let us uh, uh, quickly come up with the model theoretic present representation of this. Uh, uh, say for example, ALC and language. We'll talk about ALC or plus translator. Let us focus on ALCN. So in ALCN, what we have, we have, uh, we have. For uh, greater than or equal to n r, right? So this is the uh, mean cardinality, right? So how do we represent this? So we represent this as the set of individuals, set of individuals which satisfies the criteria, and the criteria is that let us accumulate the uh, the values the, uh, or the resources it is connected to. So R, 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 and R, and this is your B1, B2, B3. Let us count this out. So first accumulate this into a set, then count this out. If the count is greater than n, equal to n, then uh, this A would become the member of greater than equal to n R. So that is what we are going to do. So how do we accumulate? So we found find out B such that A B uh, belongs to the interpretation of R. So this is our set. Now let us count this. So this has symbol means we are counting or it is the cardinality of this set, right? So if the cardinality of this set is greater than or equal to n, then you include A to be the member of greater than or equal to n R. Right, so it will be a similar kind of scenario uh, for the max cardinality. So again, it will be a belonging to delta, and uh, the count of the connected nodes via relation R would be less than or equal to n. Right. So this is the model theoretic uh, meaning. Now let us come up with the FOL representation. So the FOL representation again uh, let us take phi greater than or equal to n r right. So it is a Class expression will be having one uh, argument. So we should have at least n connections, right? So that's why we take y1, y2 to yn, right? And all these yi's they should be pairwise distinct. Otherwise, we cannot have we cannot have a uh, the two elements can uh, collapse with each other and we cannot have more than n, right? Or, or ca cannot have at least n, right? So, uh, for i equal to j, you want this yi not equal to yj. This, this b can means we are doing pairwise. So, you are doing pairwise. Uh, we are doing pairwise and of y1 not equal to y2, y2 not equal to y3, y3 not equal to y1, so and so forth, right? And for i equal to 1 to n, we need to have a relation between x and y1, yi. 
So you have got so many relations. So a to b1, a to b2, a to b3. So these, so these are this x, a is here your x, and this these b's are y1, y2, and y3. Right? Now similarly, we can drop this phi less than equal to n r. How do we do that? So let us first pretend that there are uh, more than n uh, relations, right? So we say y1, y2, to so y n plus 1, and the rest of the things will be remaining the same. i not equal to j, y i. Let me write it clearly. i not equal to j y i not equal to y j and i equal to 1 to n phi r x y i right but this should not happen this is not the case that that there is there are n plus 1 connection out of x and all these connections are uh, having level to be r so this is the kind of first order logic representation of um, mean cardinality and max cardinality. So with this, uh, let me stop here. And in the next lecture, I will be starting with different known families of description logic. And then try to uh, find out what are the kind of constructs that are allowed for each of these families uh, going forward. Thank you.